Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Commercial UAV Expo 2022 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm here talking to our friend Gary LaQuay over at the Ag Eagle booth. How you doing, Gary? Hey, I'm doing great, thanks. Good to chat with you. Good to chat with you too. Now I was walking by your booth here and I saw the, the EB, except it was sort of all speckly and I thought, oh, that's adorable. It's in Arctic camouflage. But it turns out this actually is an EB for military use. Tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. So we had lots of requests from our military customers for something that was a little more customized to their needs. And so what we did was work with some of our partner resellers and some of the DOD clients to develop this platform for them. Uh, that's a now a blue approved unit, so it's available for easy purchase by all of the Department of Defense. That makes it really simple for them to collect near real time data while they're out there at the leading edge of the battlefield. Wow. Now, of course, when I, I think of the EB platform, which has been doing yeoman service for many years in the industry now, I think of a mapping platform. But when I think tactical, I think, you know, live video, eyes on the scene. So help me square that circle. Yeah, exactly. So essentially what we're thinking is, you know, live video is typically the norm. However, what we're doing right now is cutting out a step in the process for these guys that are right there on the leading edge. Right now, what they're having to do is call in for aerial reconnaissance, right? Well, depending on weather, they might be 15th in line. They need to get this stuff now. It's going to be classified data. So instead of having to phone the mothership and say, hey, I need this data, they've got the drone with them. They can collect it themselves. So what they can do is send it out over the hill. Let's see what's going on over there. Maybe we fly a 20, 30 minute mission. Maybe it's an hour long mission. I can bring that back, land it, run the processing through something quick like PIX40 React, for example. I can have a map back in 20 minutes, 30 minutes of flight time where I can really see now what's going on. It's unclassified data. I can share that throughout the teams and start making decisions from that data right now. No, that makes a lot of sense. I always think that's kind of the key is understanding what the customer really needs versus what you think the customer needs. Yeah, absolutely. That's been a big deal to be able to get their feedback on the product, right? To help them develop. And realistically, this was developed from their feedback almost 100%. Even the camo color scheme, right? Uh, they wanted something a little bit harder to see. And so what we've done now is integrate some security features in there where we've got encrypted communications and uh, suppressed flight logs, uh, secure micro SD cards. So if anything happens to it, you know, they're not going to be able to pull data off of the drone. Uh, and just to make it a little bit harder to see even digitally, right? All right, and so speaking of, of that data, it seems to me at least that you know, if you're transmitting telemetry back to your launch point, the bad guys could pick up that telemetry signal and possibly any command and control coming to the drone and use that to find where the good guys are. Yeah, so we can actually fly without any radio comms, so you can upload the mission to the drone beforehand, so it's stored on board, and then you don't have communications with the drone while it's in the air. It's not sending anything back, we're not sending anything to it. Uh, you have the option to turn that back on for landing if you need to kind of make some adjustments or whatever, or any time during the flight, but you can fly in complete blackout mode to be invisible through RF signals. Smart, smart. Now, one thing I know about our friends in the military and intelligence communities is that they get to play with toys that we don't get to play with. Is there any allowance made in this platform for them to plug in, let's say, bespoke hardware? Yeah, that's a good question. So kind of one of the big differences between this and the EBX platform is that open payload capability. So if users have a specific requirement for, hey, I need I don't know, an RF monitor or I need gas methane detection or whatever it is, well, we, we're not custom building that in-house, but we can give them the ability to use an open payload here. We'll give them the specs of, hey, here's what it needs to look like, here's the, what the center of gravity's gotta be, the weight, so that they can integrate it into the drone themselves and have the functionality they need. Well, that's fantastic, and obviously it's always good to see, well, anybody supporting our, our troops on the front line, but especially when we can take you know, civilian technology, modify it, and get it out to them, because that's probably a lot cheaper than whatever they're using right now. Yeah, absolutely, and that's been the key, right? Getting them something in their hands that's easy to acquire, easy to procure through the DOD lines and that DIU blue approved list now. It's available on the GSA for them as well to just put it in their shopping cart and buy it, get it out in the field. Fantastic. Well, Gary, thanks so much for sharing all this information about it. Sure, Patrick, it's great to be with you. All righty. And from Commercial UAV Expo 2022 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Mm -hmm.